Look then. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Pause the recording for 30 seconds. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. Well, I was really impressed by something I saw on a roof in Cornwall and I'd like to design something similar. Um, you have an area of planting and I'm thinking of installing this lighting in an area filled with low-growing evergreen shrubs. Hmm. You'd have to have lights and things well away from anywhere children might be. But I can see this could be very effective, if a bit complicated. How would it work? On this drawing, this is a section view. Mm. You have this low wall on the right. Yes, that's it. This is just one element, and these areas would be repeated all round the planted area. I think this will probably be a wooden wall using reclaimed timbers with an angled ceramic top surface. Perhaps even ridge tiles, like they use on roofs? Ah, oh, yes. That'd be just the sort of thing. Hmm. <laughs> and that'd make it weatherproof. Um, and then the heavy-duty electric wiring comes up through the floor just outside the planted area and into the wall. Then it's brought through to a projector low in the side of the wall, and that sends a beam of light along the fibre-optic cable. So there's no electricity in the actual lights? The fibre optic goes across the surface of the soil in the planting area. Yes, that's the beauty of it. Mm. The shrubs will soon grow to cover it up, of course. And then the cable goes past a wooden post, which is between the shrubs and can be a support for them as they grow bigger, and then runs up into each element of the installation. So the light beam is carried up to the top of each element and illuminates a kind of... Conical glass cap? Mm hmm I see. Is that the bit which would glow in the dark? Yes. And what's the cap supported on? Is it a wall? No, it's a slender acrylic rod, uh, like the stem of a flower or mushroom, which the cable runs up inside of. Well, I'll be interested to see the final drawings. Oh, thank you. I'm looking forward to putting it all together. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 3. You will hear a librarian called Adam Smith talking to the students about how to use the facilities in the library. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Welcome. Please come in and gather over here around the tables. My name is Adam Smith and I'm the librarian here. I'll show you around today and explain how to use these facilities. Hopefully when I'm done with it you'll know the ropes and please feel free to let me know of any questions or concerns that you may have. Now we are at the gate of the library. 
Upon entering into the door, you'll find that the restrooms are on your left-hand side, and opposite them is a photocopy room. Many of you are wondering about the check-in and check-out process. What you have to do is go to the circulation desk, which is to the east of the photocopy room. The reading room is a really large area in the center of the library, just to the north of the circulation desk. I'm sure you won't miss it. If you're here to do research, this is where you should bring books to look through. However, if you're here to do any group projects or other interactive activities, I advise you to use one of the study rooms, which are just to the east of the reading room. Moving on to the southeast corner, we have the periodical section, just next to the study rooms. We have a collection of different newspapers and magazines in this section. You can get last week's weather reports, or all the top stories five years ago. Our periodicals can be traced back 20 years to the time when our school library was built. Ah, our first question, yes. Can we check out magazines from the library? I'm sorry, but you cannot take any periodicals out of the library. You're welcome to read them for as long as you want while you're here, but you cannot check them out. I wonder if there is any place where we can get some food in the library. Do we have a store here? Of course. The Food Service Center is just meters away from the study rooms. It's on the northeast corner as you look at the map. The Food Service Center offers different kinds of snacks, though it's not big. Well, moving on along to the west, you will find the Video Resource Center on your right hand. We have educational videos and documentaries, as well as major motion pictures. We ask that you pay attention to the tag on the video that you pick up, as many of our documentaries are for on-site viewing only and may not be taken out of the library. To the west of the Video Resource Center is our satellite TV station. Here we stream the news from Channel 19 for most of the day. How many channels does it have? <laughs> it does have nearly 200 channels, but we generally will give top priority to channels with some big events, like presidential addresses or other breaking news. During the coverage of the presidential debate, students will take a break from studying and flock to watch it. Last, but perhaps most important, is the inquiry desk. It's just on the left-hand side when you walk into the library, so it's impossible to miss it. If you have any questions about how to use equipment or where to find something, come and ask the assistant. Don't be shy, because that's what they're here for. Afraid so. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Is there anything else I can help you with? Actually, there is. The conference is in a building called Chancery Chambers, but I don't have any idea how to get there. Oh, that's the funny-shaped building on the corner of King and Richard Streets. It's quite straightforward, really, and only a few minutes' walk. Look, I'll show you on this map. Good. A map. I like to follow a map if possible. Right. Well, step out the front entrance of the hotel and you're on Hop Street. Head south on Hop Street towards Gorse Lane and take the second on the left onto Vickers Street West. Go all the way down the hill past the Mexican Cafe on your left, the Rebel Hostel on your right and the big church on the corner of Allen Street. Oh, I think I know the one. It has a huge steeple. 
Yes, you're right. When you get to the bottom of the hill, you'll have to cross over the main street. What's the name of the main street? Mill Street. Mill Street. Ah,、oh, yes, there it is. Cross the main street and continue on to Vicar Street East. There's a big bank next to a bookshop on the corner. Go up the hill towards the entrance to the park. I've heard it's very beautiful. Oh yes, well worth a look when you've got some free time. Anyway, don't go in the park. Turn left into Kitchen Street. You'll walk past Bowen's Bistro. Actually, probably the best place to get a good lunch at a reasonable price. After Bowen's, take the second left into Baker's Lane. It's a very short street. Then take the first on your left onto King Street, and you should see the Art Deco Chancery Chambers building a bit further along, on the corner of Richard Street. Oh, thank you for that. I'm most grateful. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions sixteen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions sixteen to twenty. Now, please look at the map I've given you of the Healthy Hearing Medical Clinic and Surgery. For those not familiar with our practice, reception can be found through the main door at the end of the corridor. If your consultation is booked with Mr. Green, you need to go through the main door and turn right by the nurses' desk, and his office is at the end of the corridor on your left-hand side. If you need to alter any of your personal details, Please visit our secretary at the Office for Medical Records, which you will find next to the therapy room. If you are awaiting surgery, please first check in with reception before taking the first door on the right after you enter the clinic. Finally, in the event that you feel disappointed with any of the services we have provided, or have any further questions, please locate our manager's office. Which can be found near the office for medical records and between two closets. If you have any more questions about the Healthy Hearing Medical Clinic and Surgery, please do not hesitate to contact us on zero one two five six triple one triple one. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two. You will hear the director of a language centre library explaining about its facilities to some new students. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven 
to 16. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Welcome to the library, or the ILC, which means Independent Learning Centre, and let me explain about some of its facilities. We're standing here at the entry gates next to the borrowing desk. That's where you check out any books, but you are also advised to study in the library here, since most of our material cannot be borrowed. Thus, we have seating along the middle of the library, and in that far corner in front of us, on the left, we have the quiet reading section for some serious reading activity. We used to have the computers there, but then realised that that corner was very quiet, and thus better suited for the purpose it now has. The computers were instead shifted to a more central location, right beside us here on the left. Again, somewhat confusingly, this area once housed the newspaper and magazine section, but the people in the quiet reading area had to walk too far to collect this literature, so it was moved to right beside them in the adjacent corner. So, feel free to read the newspapers there, but the reference books, those huge weighty dictionaries, atlases and encyclopedias, we're all situated at the opposite end of the building, against the wall. This was because they weren't generally that popular, and we wanted more space for the magazine racks, always a favourite with readers. OK, as well as reading, you need to work on your listening skills, and for that you need the audio section. Again, such an activity needs a quiet area, so we put this in the last remaining corner, up there on your right, as you can see, there are CD players and headphones, so just borrow the listening packs, sit down there and listen away. Right, that just leaves the main library. In other libraries, that's often right beside the newspaper and magazine section, allowing freedom to choose from all genres of literature, but here we've got them further apart. For the main library, just follow your nose past the central seating there and it's there among all that shelving, upon which you'll find an 